Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Vadim Rutkevich, and I'm happy to welcome you today at our first webinar, Secrets of Efficient Table Filtration in Confluence. We are just waiting for a couple of minutes for other people to join us. And before we start, I want to introduce myself and my colleague who will assist me today. So, as I've, uh, as I've already told you, my name is Vadim Rutkevich and I work as a business analyst at Stillsoft. My colleague is Andrei Khaneev and he will uh, help me with the webinar. He's a leading developer and the product owner of Table Filter and Charts so we'll, uh, so he will participate in the Q&A session after the webinar after the demonstration of all filtration capabilities in our add-on. Uh, if someone cannot hear me or cannot experience some problems uh, with the sound, please uh, indicate this in the chat while we are waiting. Hello, Nicholas. Can you hear me just at, at test? I can hear you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think that it's time to start our demonstration. So, I will share my screen and then I will guide you through the, all the filtration capabilities that our add-on provides to its users. I hope that uh, all of you have already tried our add-on and you are familiar with some of its features. Uh, today, uh, today's webinar will show you all the best practices and approaches that you can use in your everyday work for efficient filtration of table data in Confluence. If you have any questions, you can ask them during the webinar and we will ask them during the Q&A session. So, I start. If we take a look at this picture, you can see that our add-on is equipped with, uh, with, a wide set, uh, with a wide set of filters that you can use in your everyday life. So, it includes the following ones a drop-down filter, a free text filter, a global filter, a date range filter, a number range filter and a visual filter. As you can see, you can apply any of these uh, filter types for filtering content in your confluence. Uh, so now I will tell you in more details about, so now I will speak in more details about each of these filters so you can better understand in which situations you can apply them and how you can adjust the settings and configuration to get the results that, uh, that you are really looking for. So, the first filter and the oldest filter that we have in the add-on is, is the table filter in charts add-on, uh, is a drop-down filter. This filter, types, uh, this filter type pulls uh, all the unique values from the table column and allows you to select one or multiple values for filtration. For example, you can add this filter in the page view mode. So, you click Add Filter. You select the column which you want to filter and you select the filter type for adding. So once it's added, you get the list of options for selecting. For example, I want to see only the screens that have the IPS screen. I select this value. I also want to add the LCD screens and I select one more value. You can filter multiple columns at once. Nothing is found for something. For new. In the recent version of the add-on, we added a capability uh, to filter delimited values. This may happen in situations when you have uh, several values enumerated in each cell and they are separated by some delimiter. For these situations, uh, if you try to apply our drop-down filter, you will see something like this. All the values will be displayed as a single string. Instead of using this, uh, you can edit the page, open the settings of the table filter, switch to the filtration tab, 
and set the correct cell value delimiter, in our case this a comma. After saving the macro and the page, I can proceed to filtration. As you can see, now I have some specific values from each cell that were delimited. So now I can look for each of the, uh, for each of the value I'm interested in. Our, uh, this filter type also, allow, uh, also supports work with uh, uh, confluent statuses and with user mentions. It can be very convenient uh, when you have some task lists or when you use the page properties report uh, to generate uh, some reports or see task lists for the whole team. In this case, you can just select the necessary. Also, for example, in our case, it was a series of blog posts and see who uh, wrote this or that blog post. For statuses, you have the same thing. As you can see, everything works smoothly and you can select the status that you are really looking for. One augmentation that our add-on provides to its user is uh, the current user option. It allows you to see only uh, the things that relate uh, to you. So, for example, when you log in as a Peter Jacobs, you will be able to see only entries for, uh, for your account. For example, if I log into this page as an Ashley Stone, one moment, if I log here as Ashley Stone, I can see just my set of data. As you can see, this, uh, this filter type allows you to use some dynamic constructions. Uh, the next uh, couple of filters I am going to talk uh, about is a free text and a global filter. Uh, in general, the objectives that these filters perform are quite similar and the main difference between them is uh, uh, the following. The free text filter operates with a single column and a global filter allows you to filter throughout the table. So uh, it's very convenient uh, when you want uh, to filter the whole table without specifying multiple free text filters for different columns. So let's see how it works. All you need is just to enter some text query. For example, as a target country, I can start entering OS. Then I see that I have Austria and Australia. I can further specify the query and finally I get Australia. So I can also enter Germany and so on and so forth. Uh, so this field, uh, these, types, uh, these two types of filters are ideal for different uh, situations when you deal with uh, unique values in your table columns, such as full names, names of countries, some uh, uh, number patterns, uh, or something like this. Uh, these filters also support regular expressions, so you can use them in your everyday life. For example, uh, here, the global filter looks for different uh, uh, last name patterns and looks for all uh, last names that end at son, ron, ton, and for uh, hen, when, dan. I, I can remove, for example, this one, and I will have only a person who has a ton, so Ashley Stone, Nelson, Ashley Stone, Amberton, and so on and so forth. So the next example is employee skills. Here I also use uh, regular expressions and as you remember from uh, from the previous time here you can also use the drop-down filter but prior to adding this option you have a capability to use the ampersand uh, as as the AND operator and you can look for these values in your table column. So if I start Right in something, so there is, there are no people who have this, and you can enter something like this, and so on and so forth. So this filter allows you to enter some text queries, and they are quite flexible. 
Uh, one more example, you can, for example, you're looking for all transactions that were processed at 11 o'clock. Here you can apply our regular expression, for, uh, for example, the one you see here. It looks for the time pattern that corresponds to 11 o'clock. For example, if I want to see all transactions that happened between 11 and 12 o'clock, I just update my key, uh, my query or oh, between 15 uh, bet between 11 and 15 o'clock this is what we have for free text and global filters the next filter that we added in our add-on is a date range filter uh, this filter allows you to select the start and the end dates for your time periods so uh, this filter is very uh, efficient when you deal with some uh, dates in your reports, when you deal with some financial data. So you can just add this uh, filter on your management pane. For example, you have here. Oh, well, we already have this one. Let's just remove and from scratch. Uh, by default, uh, our, ad our add-on has a predefined set of uh, date formats, but all the time you have a capability to change them. Here we have the correct format, months, day, and year. So here we have nothing to do. All you need is just to select information you are looking for, and after filtration you get the values. Uh, for situations when you deal with a table that has some non-standard date format, you can also set the correct format as well. So here we have the full month name, then we have date and year. After updating I can proceed to filtration. And one more date format and our add-on works, works with it too. This is what we have for date range. In the recent version of the add-on, we added a capability to set dynamic time intervals. Why is it important to use? Because it uh, updates uh, the set of data on a regular basis. It's very crucial when you work for, uh, when you put data from some database, and in this case, you can uh, use uh, this filter to show uh, to get uh, all, uh, updates. Uh, once data is updated in your database. So each, uh, every day when you open the page you will see a new portion of data received from your database. So here you can write something like minus 5 uh, or oh, you can this is what we have. You can also use dates, uh, dates here, and it will work too. Uh, the next filter that we uh, that is also equipped within the table filter macro is uh, the number range filter. What does this filter allows you to do? It works with uh, integer and decimal numbers. Uh, when using with decimal numbers, you will have to uh, specify the correct uh, decimal separator. It's, uh, it's needed for correct operation of such numbers. Uh, so what it allows you to do? It allows you to set the necessary number range for filtration. For example, let's write something like this and limit it to this. Here, we, uh, here you can see what we can get and let's just update something here. Our datings table is updated accordingly. All the changes you can save in the macro settings as well from the uh, management pane. Uh, one more feature that we added in the recent release of the add-on is support for time intervals. So when you deal with data exported from some uh, sport events, you can use uh, uh, this number range filter to process this data. For example, when we uh, when you want to compare clock time for some uh, 
for some contestants, you can specify the time interval you are interested in. Let just increase, and here we get the data we are looking for. I'll adjust only two. And for run, let's try something like six forty five to seven thirty. Oh. Run. Everything was much longer. So there was only one person who gets into this limit. Okay, we proceed uh, to another uh, case of using this filter. And here it is. Uh, our add-on uh, also supports operation uh, with Jira workloads. For example, where uh, you can use uh, the native Jira issue macro to put data from Jira projects. Uh, if they have work logs, you can quickly uh, compare the discrepancy between the original estimates that your developers uh, set in your Jira issues and then compare it to the actual time spent on this or that task. So how it works? For example, I'm looking in uh, estimate as one, uh, one day to two days. And then I'm interested in the time spent more than two days. And here we see that the original estimate was two days and no other tasks matching this. And if we compare, we can see that remaining estimate and time spent differs. And our team performed much better than we expected. Uh, and the last type that our add-on provides to you is a visual filter. Uh, this type of filter allows you to deal with different media content uh, available in Confluence. So it supports filtration of icons, emoticons, images, and even states of checkboxes. For example, when you have uh, when you have some table like this one, you can check the knowledge. You can look for some for some person, for their skills, and check whether something requires additional certification or not. And for checkboxes, as you can see, the filtration occurs, and for them too. It's very uh, convenient to use this filter when dealing when working with the Jira issue macro. Here you can use it to filter issues by issue type, or by priority. As you can see, no priority for these issue types. And let's just see something like this. Uh, I hope that you have noticed that there are uh, a lot of cases when you can apply our filters to get the filtration results you are, uh, you are looking for. And uh, besides different kinds of filter types, our add-on provides different kinds of uh, enhancements and augmentations that allows you to adjust the table look and to adjust the filtration parameters in your tables. So let's try to see this. Uh, one of them is the default filter values. It's, uh, it's, uh, this uh, option allows you to check, uh, to set default values for your tables, uh, to set default values for your tables and keep them in the macro settings uh, before you uh, before you uh, go uh, to the page remote and start filtration. Uh, you can set default filter values in the page edit mode. I will show you how it we have here a very big table. So you switch to the filtration tab, and here you can select 
the necessary default values for each column of yours. For example, new and disposed manufacture. Let's add like bell and MSI and give our day we keep some dynamic intervals. So after saving the page, you can see that our default values are displayed here. Uh, one more uh, thing about uh, default values is that you can keep the, uh, save them right in the page view mode too. You can just quickly select the necessary ones, remove the necessary and set them in the macro body. So upon the page reload you will get the new default values in them. Uh, a lot of our customers use this option to limit uh, this, uh, the set of data displayed to other people who use Confluence. They use it. Uh, us they use default values usually with the options with the following options, such as uh, hide control buttons. In this case, they output some predefined set of data, and other people can only view this. And they also disable uh, the change saving. In this case, other people uh, can. Uh, use uh, filtration, can apply filtration to this data, but they will not be able to save the values and in such a way overwrite the default values set by the author. The next augmentation that we added in the recent version is the OR operator. Uh, by default, uh, the table filter macro operates uh, with the AND uh, operator, but in some cases you may need to use the OR operator. This option is available in the macro settings as well. You open the filtration tab and here you have the multi-filter operator. By default we use AND, but all, uh, anyway you can ch change it for OR. In this case, it will uh, try to uh, to check any of the cells that match the selected criteria. The, use, uh, the usage of this operator can be uh, uh, can, you can apply the separator when you deal uh, with uh, empty cells when you need to locate all the empty cells in your table, and in this way the separator will do its business. So here we have empty, and here we have all the empty cells that you want to update. Uh, besides uh, filtration optimization, our add-on also supplies different table look augmentations. In, uh, the, the one of them is spark lines. Uh, spark lines are small uh, charts that are embedded into the table cells. These uh, spark lines are generated on the basis of number values placed in the table rows. So to activate spark lines you need to edit the macro, select this option spark line charts and on the filtration tab you need to set the correct decimal separator because in some cases uh, the decimal separator may vary. So, uh, spark lines are generated both in the page view and in the page edit mode. So you can use the general data trends right while working on the data or while you in it. So here we have these spark lines. Uh, uh, for the situations when you uh, when you exp uh, export data from some external systems, you may uh, need to hide columns that are accessed because in sometimes you do not want to hide, uh, you cannot hide these uh, columns uh, in the database or something like this and our macro can be applied right here. Here we have a table with information that we are not interested in. So I want to hide for example work phone, I can hide, I want to hide notes, I want to hide website and so on and so forth. All the settings and all the hidden columns are saved in the macro body. 
and you can also double click and uh, s uh, specify some custom name for this field, for example, hidden data. Don't forget to press Enter. Uh, so, uh, the other augmentation that is available in our add-on is the auto numbering option. In some cases, you may need to apply the automatic row numbering. In this case, our add-on supplies two kinds, uh, two types of numbering. You can find them on the table view tab. Here we have the dynamic and static and each of these types can uh, show data in the ascending or descending order. It's up to you to decide which, ones, uh, which one to choose. It depends just on your situation. We usually use the dynamic, uh, the dynamic numeration when I uh, want to see the instant number of values that match my criteria. Uh, and we use the static when we need to locate the table rows for update or uh, to see whether they are placed in the table. So this option allows you to quickly locate them. The other option that we have is the default column sorting. In some situations the sorting order matters and in this case uh, the sorting by one column may be not enough. With our add-on you can do this quite quickly. You, quick, uh, you, you, do, uh, you switch to the table view tab and here you can select the columns. I have a table we, uh, so I want to see uh, people uh, at first sorted by company in the ascending order. Then I want to see them sorted by department and finally by their full name. After saving well, let's check. We have sorted them first by company, then by department, and then by first by their full name. So in this case, you can select multiple columns for sorting, and it will be and this sorting order will be applied to the whole table. Uh, and the last two options which I want uh, to tell you about allows you to limit the number of, uh, to limit the size of the displayed table. The first option allows, uh, is called the show first and rows and it allows you to limit the number of rows shown in the table. It is also available on the, uh, on the table view tab. Here you can specify the necessary number and only the first rows will be shown from this table. When you filter, everything will be updated. And the last option that you may also like is the fit table to screen area. When you have uh, uh, got a uh, not a large screen, you may find it necessary uh, to embed your table into the available screen area because you do not want to scroll the page up and down especially when it contains more than several hundreds of rows and in this case the fit table to screen area option will help you greatly. So as you can see the whole table was embedded into my screen area so it does not take the whole page and I can quickly um, uh, and I can quickly scroll it up and down. So it's very convenient and it does not consume much space off your screen. Uh, the last thing which I want to point out is that uh, management and filtration is available in, the, in both page uh, view and edit modes. Uh, for example, while uh, uh, while uh, working with the page, in the page view mode you can quickly apply filters. But usually when you proceed to editing data, you, you will not be able to see this filtered data. But with our add-on you can do this. You just click show filter and here you can see the already applied filters and you can proceed to what you want.
So here we have our values and for example let's change for another company. As you can see filtration occurs in the page view mode. You can also add filters like in the page view mode and you can also remove them too. All the settings you can, uh, you can save right here and after saving the settings and the page you will also see all the new filters and all the updated values right in the page view mode. It's very convenient. And the last one is the insertion of macro and unwrapping of it. So in some situations when you deal with generic tables it's uh, very uh, it's, it's necessary to quickly uh, place it within the table filter macro. Instead um, of using the macro browser and trying to search for the macro here or trying to enter some uh, uh, macro name, you can just let's just unwrap it for a while. You just position your mouse pointer within the table and click, click the icon on the table management pane. So here you are and your table is within the table filter macro. With the situations when you no longer need to filter the table data, you can unwrap it. You just select the macro and click unwrap. After this, the table filter macro is removed. So after saving the page, you will get just a normal table. Unfortunately, this option works just with the generic tables that you can manually create in Confluence. It does not work with macros. I want to point out that uh, our Don uh, supports different macros, both native and macros provided by other Atlassian vendors. So you uh, get a very flexible tool that allows you to output data from external sources and filter them as you can do, for example, in Microsoft Excel. I hope that uh, I think that that's all for now with the demonstrations. So, if you have any questions, let me just take a look. No questions for now. Okay, I will run uh, a, sh uh, a quick poll. Please uh, answer these questions. And then we will proceed to the Q&A session. So please answer the question, which of these filters do you use most of all? Okay, thank you for your answers. I am closing this poll. And one more question. Please rate your satisfaction with the filtration cap capabilities available in the add-on. Okay, just a couple of seconds while some people are taking a decision. Okay, I hope, uh, I think that everyone has answered, so thank you for your answers. I'm closing this poll. Uh, Okay, uh, so now I will uh, uh, ask Andre to join us. So, if you have any questions, you can ask us. So, we are waiting for your questions. Feel free to ask them if you are interested in the destiny of the add-on, in the addition of new features, in doing something. Just write a question, and we will 
try to answer it. Okay, Hoa. Hello. Hi, um, I was wondering for your filters, how do you, uh, are there best practices if I have multiple tables on one page? Because we have a page um, on Confluence that's pretty unruly. It's got uh, probably <clears throat> about uh, 11 columns across and then 50 or 60 rows within um, each table and I've probably got about three of those tables on one Confluence page. So would I just apply the filter um, on each uh, each table within that page and if I wanted to search on all of them I would have to reformat that page and just use one big giant table? Does that make sense? Uh... If I understand correctly, you have multiple tables on your Confluence page, is it so? Yes, multiple okay. pages. Uh, okay, you can place all your tables within our within the one table filter macro and it will work and it will filter all these tables at once if they have, of course, some common values. Oh, perfect. Okay, thank you. Okay, no problem. You're welcome. Hello, Nicholas. Yes. I was wondering if you can provide the URL to um, explanation of the syntax of the filters that you showed earlier, where ah, regular regular expressions. Here, regular yeah? expressions. That's right. Okay. Uh, all information is available uh, in our documentation site, which is available at. Yeah, docs.stillsolve.com. After this, we will share this uh, recording with you, so you will be able to find it here. I will just find this page and paste to you one moment. Free text filter. So here on the page, you can find different examples how to use this regular expression. So I'm just pasting this URL to you. So Thank you. I share to everyone. Okay. Any other questions? One moment. So do you have any other questions? Don't be afraid. We are we are open, and we want to answer questions. Maybe you are interested in the destiny of our adorn. So feel free. Just write a question, and we will give you a word. Okay, I see that there are no more questions, so I I consider that this session is closed for now. It can be closed, and thank you for your attention, thank you for your time. We really appreciate that you spent a bit of time to get new knowledge how to work with our product. We are open to any discussions, 
And if you have any suggestions, you can always contact us and or you can submit your ideas uh, or support requests to our feedback and support portal. It was a pleasure to broadcast to you. Uh, so uh, I hope that this evening was useful for you and you find something new, how you can work in confluence with stable filters. And uh, we want to say thank you to all of you and Merry Christmas to all of you and to all of your families. It was nice, it was a pleasure to show you something about our add-on. Okay, I'm finishing this session. Thank you everyone for your attention.